So yo yo yo, what up though, man? Real push the goat in the building, man. Uh, What's you know, going on? How you doing, man? I'm good, man. How you doing? Hey, man. You know, trying to make it, bro. Trying to make my way through the A. You know, what kind of hip hop? Trying for to sure. see if I can come down here and get a superpower too, so I can take it back. You know, mm -hmm. I'm here for the clout. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? People come and go, man. That's, That's how right. it is. Yeah, people come here. People want to live here. Get that shit going and go back home. So out here, you connected. In the city, you know what I'm saying, on the whole music management side, the music business side, man. Kind of for those who are not familiar with you, yeah. the, the very few, tell us a little bit of background about your business and what you do. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I started a management company. Um, before I even got into the music, though, I played a big part in the city by like throwing parties and stuff here. Um, that was really kind of like my big breakthrough into the music. I was booking all these artists here at my clubs and stuff, and it turned into like, man, you should like represent some of these people. You're mm. getting them booked, you helping them break. So it kind of just transitioned into that. So I was throwing parties here for maybe like right out of high school. Got you. Um, for like seven years straight. And then I transitioned into the music thing. And um, yeah, it kind of just happened like that. Next thing you know, I'm getting calls from labels to service records and mm. um, work on artist development, and all kinds of stuff. So now I just figured out how I can tie all this stuff in together. Gotcha. Um, especially if I'm still throwing events and throwing parties in the city, I'm going to make sure I'm working my artist stuff throughout that same system. Gotcha. So are you still into throwing parties right now? You definitely. Definitely. Yeah, that shit ain't going to stop. Okay. Yeah. Now, so like, how do you get paid off the whole party thing? Like, What's what's the big money driver when coming to party promotion? Uh, The door and the bar. The you door and the bar. You got to have good negotiation skills with the owners here. You got to okay. have good relationships to get the certain deal that you want. Um, and I think that really pretty much helps out the situation. But that's how I get my bread from the door and the bar. I get a certain percentage. I got you. So, like, give me a can you give me an idea of a good promoter deal with the bar? I mean, with the owner. And what's a what's a terrible one? What's the worst one you had? Uh, uh, the worst one now, I would say, if an owner tell you he can only give you the door, that ain't good because it's like. You bringing in people to generate all kind of sales from food, from hookah, from liquor, from section prices. So it's like you want to be compensated from that, not just from one door fee. Right. Um, so if you know what you're doing and you know about this promo stuff, then you know what to ask for. But a good deal would be 100 percent of the door and maybe like a 70, 30 split on the bar. Just 30 percent from the bar really would be a good number after a certain number. Let's say the bar do. 20,000, you get 30% of it. And if it goes over 30,000, you can try to go for 35%. It's gotcha. just a bunch of negotiations. I got you. Okay, so let's let's start for like from the beginning. So I know you're an Atlanta resident, right? Yep. Born and raised here? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, Born and Okay. Born and raised here. So what, what part? Because uh, Money Moo kind of broke that down. Yeah, Most definitely. people just think of Atlanta, but like specifically, where are you from? I'm from the east side of Atlanta. East side of Atlanta. Yep, Stone Mountain to be exact. And so growing up, were you always into music? Like, what was your passion yeah. growing up? What's funny is um, growing up, man, I wanted to do music. I wanted to actually be an artist. What was the rap name? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> oh, you don't want to share the name? What was the name? No, nah, I don't want to share the name, man. Uh, it was Red. It was Red Selfish back then. Oh, Red Selfish. That ain't bad, man. Yeah. I mean, it was. it's corny now when I think about it, but. Okay. It's just <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, uh, and it was just, I just did it. I always liked music, man. I always listened to music even when I was younger. Um, and it was just like, I knew I was going to do something great in the music business. Gotcha. Um, and I'm glad I took the route that I chose stepping over from the other side of it, going into the management and the music exec side. Because um, I feel like I done got way deeper in than doing, on doing this side than doing the other side. Gotcha. So like, at what point, like, so... Always been intrigued in music. Like, what kind of music was like really influencing you growing up? Um, man, for me, like, I, to this day, I still listen to Tupac. Tupac. Yeah, that's like a okay. big one for me. Um, what's the one genre of music that you like that most people wouldn't even think that you like, or what's should shock you? I'm a big R and B person. Okay. Key. Like, I know I do a lot of business in the hip hop and the rap, um, but I love listening to R and B, especially me being in the clubs and being out so much at night gotcha. hearing the rap. During the day at my house, man, the R&B's on, Sade's on, or, you know, yeah, <laughs> some stuff like some chill shit that I can just roll up and smoke and vibe. 
it's speaking of R and B and not to derail and we ain't come back to the story. Yeah. It's R and B dead as a cause at one point in time R and B dominated the charts. Right. It was like it was dope that you had a major R and B and then it would feature a hip hop artist. Then it went from a even and then you had a hip hop artist with an R and B artist and now a hip hop artist with auto tune like fuck I'm not calling nobody saying shit. Yeah. Auto tune and I'm gonna sing it myself. Is R and B a dead art? Uh, I wouldn't say so. I think it's more so of a soulful kind of vibe now um, in, in some genres of the R&B. Then you got people who are not really R&B, but like mm. they're holding notes on records and they're singing. They're putting together these melodies that people are liking and composing. Because it's awkward to me. Like I hear like not awkward. I guess I'm used to it now, but it's different. Like I hear like trap artists with this very soulful singing. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, I'm going to shoot you in the face with a K. Like the sound and the melody yeah. <laughs> and the softness don't add up to the, the aggressiveness of the, the the verbiage that is being spit out. Like, yeah. And I feel like R&B has been tucked away. Like I feel like if you want to hear R&B, you have to go to the... The 90s or the early 2000s. For that true R&B feel, yeah. Now people are just rapping about... I'm singing about like... How they feel about a woman, how they dealing with the certain situations they're going through, which is still somewhat R and B, but like that true R and B that we used to listen to back in the day, you got to go back and listen to it. Because I feel like this generation don't have no real wedding music. Yeah, I'm but, still gonna play Case Happily Ever After, <laughs> you know, something like that. No doubt. Um, yeah, for sure. So like, so back to like your childhood, like growing up East Atlanta, like what mm-hmm. for you? What were some of the things that you felt like you had to overcome to get to where you are now? Like, kind of, what was your story and your upbringing like? Um, really, my biggest ob- obstacle growing up, man, was just trying to figure out what it is I wanted to do in life. Gotcha. Um, and I think that was really a big thing for me after graduating high school. Um, just trying to find a place to like, what's my next step? Because I didn't go to college, so I started working right out of high school. Got you. Um. And I think really just like listening to music back in in high school, we was rapping, making CDs and stuff and doing all that shit. So I knew I wanted to be in the music field. I just didn't know how I was going to get into it. Uh, so I used the party promotion pretty much to like get my way in the door. Got you. It went from throwing parties to now, now I'm doing marketing plans and coming up with strategies for album releases for artists and promoting that throughout the city and it turned in from just promoting clubs to now promoting artists to now promoting brands and it just grew over time and now it's like yeah now I'm like doing all that shit still just all composed to one okay and so then like you step for like along with the promotion now that you into the business side mm-hmm. like the music game is wide open like we've been in a, the rap game has evolved so much that we've seen a lot of artists who made a lot of mistakes when it comes to contracts and stuff like that we yeah. see in a new space right now with Joe Button and Spotify with that whole podcast lane of how that should be monetized. Yeah. Like, how, what do you think, like, artists, are artists still making those same mistakes when it comes to management and getting into bad deals? Like, what are some of the mistakes that you're seeing artists, like, kind of constantly do um, right now? Just what? being eager to be on just because, like, people are looking at social media so hard and just trying to pretty much put their life in that same situation without going through the, through the steps of even getting to that point. Right. Um, so when you're thinking like that and moving that way, that sets you up to be in bad situations and bad deals because you're just breaking your neck to get into a situation to look on for your peers and your friends when really you just need to stay down, you need to learn the business, um, and then get to that point once you get there. Um, I, like I tell it, like I tell Moo, it's like it's not about who get there first is just about when you get there, gotcha. who hang on. No, that's real. Um, and that's really what, what I tell people that I'm working with. Like, don't worry about this person blowing up tomorrow. You've been going so hard and you feel like it ain't working for you, man. I've seen this shit happen from people. It's just about the timing. So it's the, being that social media has such a big influence now, mm-hmm. is the internet the new streets? Uh. It play a big part, man. It play a big part. It definitely opened up an avenue for people to get seen and get heard through the masses without little or no budget. Right. Whether it's good music or bad music. If you develop some kind of fan base from online, shit, you're on your way. I guess you... So, like, with the whole element of, you know, everybody digital, mm-hmm. how... Getting creative with the streets, like, how does a person really reach and touch the streets since so much is done digital? Uh, that's when you come up with a with a marketing plan 
I think definitely you just find different innovative ways to get people attention. Um, of course, people still do posters and stuff, but now people are giving out flash drives or little cards with the QR reader on it where you can scan gotcha. and it pulls up your Apple Music link. Um, just being creative with stuff like that, I think that'll help. Uh, more people now doing billboards in the city. Um, See that going up. Uh, so, it, you know, people are just trying to adjust to it. I think that's the, really the big thing is you got some people that's still stuck in that time frame of that age where that's going to get them going when it's like you got to change when this shit change or you're going to be left behind. No doubt. So, like, a lot of artists always look at it like, man, I get a manager, I'm on. <laughs> I, I find a manager, I'm going to blow up. It's the manager's responsibility to blow me up. Like, man, what? when should an artist, I guess the question would be, when should an artist be searching for a manager? At what time? And what exactly is it that an manage, artist manager do? I feel like you shouldn't have a manager until you have something to manage. Mm. Um, your business, if you're at that point to where people are hitting you, asking you business-related stuff that you don't really know the answer to, um, you're starting to see a buzz in your stuff, people are starting to request you and offer you bookings and things like that. Anything before that point, I feel like as an artist, you should be able to handle. Once you get to that point to where the business stuff kicks in, that's when you find somebody that you're going to have to trust and partner up with and trust that that person is going to do whatever they're supposed to do in that role to make sure your success in your business is ran the right way. Um, but I feel like you shouldn't have one before then. Um, and a manager is really just supposed to come in and, and kind of help facilitate and get the job done with you. Got you. So on your side as a manager, what do you feel like is the most difficult uh, process when it comes to managing an artist? Um, I see a lot of people struggle with like their relationship with the artist mm. as far as like getting them to do certain things and um, recommending what you should do. Um, and a lot of some people are, are good working together. Some people are just working with each other because they were put in that situation. Gotcha. Um, I know with me, if I'm managing somebody, I have to build like a personal relationship with you because now I'm, I'm talking to you every day more than my girl, my family members. Um, so it's like we got to establish some kind of connection first to know that it's even going to work. And gotcha. I think a lot of people skip that step and just like, oh, I need a manager. Even in my DMs, there's so many people, bro, how much you charge for management or can you manage me? It's like, dude, you don't even know me from a can of paint. But then you'll be the same person to get on social media and be like, they they doing bad business. They judge me. And it's like you got to do your research first, too, on who you requesting to represent you. And I think a lot of people don't do that. I know I interviewed um, Mo3 manager, Rainwater. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rainwater was like, don't ask me to manage you. Let me just find you. Just work, it. grind, yeah. and let me find you. I'm going to say it. If I feel it in my gut and I like what you're doing and I see you putting in the work in, I'm going to ask you that. Do you got some kind of representation? How's that going? It's been situations where I didn't reach out to artists and they already have management, but they manage it and don't even know what they're doing. Gotcha. So then that turns into me kind of helping the manager. I then turn into consulting with them and then helping the manager manage them and helping both of them. Got you. So like when, when things are like that, I guess when management goes wrong. So mm -hmm. you, you have you ever dealt with an artist who was disgruntled under management because of their definition of management didn't match up to what you actually do? Absolutely. You got some artists that feel like a manager is supposed to pay for everything. A manager is supposed to just utilize and dump every possible resource that they have into you when it's like things got to be set up a certain way or you'll end up burning that relationship out with people i can't go to somebody i can't go to the radio and say hey this is a hit i need y'all to play this shit tomorrow without showing you all proof of why y'all should play it if that makes sense um so yeah that's that's really my intake on it man as far as Working with people who had an issue with the way I do management or the way they feel like a manager should be doing more. I had that conversation before we even decided to do business. Yeah. To see where you're headed and to see how you go about it and how you think about that. Um, and that tells me what I need to do on my end. So, Lynn, let's go to the label part of it. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of artists, like, they hit me up like, oh, Big D, you got any connections to a label. At what point in time is it good for a lot of artists to actually approach a label if there if there is any yeah i'm about to say because everybody's situation different you got okay. some people who don't need a, a major label to back them 
that's getting a following on their own, that found investments to be able to move that stuff. So then you got some people. Well, let's let's start right there, real quick. Yep. Can you become a mega star without a major label? Yes. So who who are some artists that you felt like became international like mega stars without the back? Because some would just say like Chance the Rapper. But he had like a real strong he had like a real strong investor behind him. So it's still kind of pseudo label. Um, I was you even I used 21 Savage because even before he went major, he already had enough shit going on and enough leverage to where he can work a deal how he wanted to structure it mm. because he built that up on his own independently. So then if he did that, what incentive did a label give him if he was already able to pretty much garner everything that a label does? More money, okay. more resources to do other things, to get into film, get into shows, get into placements like that, and gotcha. just taking their music more on a larger span, like worldwide. A label can give you that machine to make you go worldwide. Okay. Um, so it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's about how you all can partner up and work together on it. And I think a lot of people jump to that label move too early and get put in bad situations because they don't have enough leverage to bring to the table. So I assume you, you've done a few label meetings before, yeah. right? So like, can you kind of explain like what a label meeting is for, for artists who never had that experience? Like, Yeah. Um, it's really getting to know who the artist is. Okay. A lot of times when people are having these label meetings, that's their first time meeting the artist. Mm. So they want to meet him, hear what other music you got, uh, what situations you got currently. Are you signing anybody? Um, they want to ask you about your analytics. How's your streaming going? Um, but then you got some artists, I mean, some labels who don't really care about that analytics that want to know just do you have talent? Mm. Um, are you a good artist? Can you keep this stuff going? Do we see longevity? Um, that's really what those meetings be about. And you got some people that see it right there in that meeting and want to pull the trigger. And you got some labels that like, let me sit back and see how it unfolds. Got you. So are those days, you know, remember when the label will find that person who can sing real good on the corner and take that person who has nothing and develop them into a major artist? Are those days gone? Like, do you have to generate our own fame base um, in order for a label to be interested? It's rare. I, I would say that. I don't say I wouldn't say it's complete obsolete. But nowadays, it's, it's rare. You get some people that get good content or, or post good content of them singing songs and stuff. And somebody might pick up on it and take them under their wing and start developing them and see how it goes. But it all is going to start from you. Gotcha. You're putting that stuff out there to be seen for it. What's, what's your idea of the hip hop scene right now in Atlanta? Like, How do you feel about it? We on fire. We running the world from the producers, from the artists. <laughs> the A got this shit on lock. I, I like that cocky shit, man. Y'all know y'all running this shit, huh? Yeah, man. The, and we the, all, yeah, it's like, and we show love, bro. Like, we'll go to states and show love. We ain't on no Hollywood shit. Um, and the A just give you an opportunity, bro, to make that shit happen a lot quicker than different places and people starting to figure that out. So what about like when people were like, hey, you know what, I'm going to move to Atlanta and I'm going to blow? Because we we understand music in itself is oversaturated. Right. But because Atlanta is the Wakanda I like that. The Wakanda of hip hop. For sure. Like, how can an artist who decide they want to relocate here come here and get on? Link with some people that's here that has a good record of making shit happen is what I would suggest to anybody. I wouldn't suggest you just come in here not knowing nobody. First, you want to come here and link up with somebody who got some shit going on because you'll get here and get finessed and thinking this is the way it's supposed to go. Yeah. You done dumped thousands of dollars into some shit to where you really should have been doing some other shit, but it's because you didn't do your research on it, now you fucked. I got you. So, and because I feel like with Mogul State of Mind, the pod, the the, the platform that I have, mm -hmm. you know, so I like to highlight those who behind the scenes because there's a lot of people who move in behind the scenes. Yeah, Atlanta's ran off of that, man. Relationships is worth more than money here. So who's the top label here? Is it QC? Because a lot of people know QC from the outside. But like, if you were to, you don't have to order it in yeah. a specific order. But if you would get your top four, like labels that's here, that's kind of really doing it. I Missed mean, a couple of them. LVRN's doing it with Black and Summer Walker. Mm. Um, shit, Slaughter Gang's doing it with Savage and Nudie. QC's doing it. Um, you got Authentic Empire that's doing it. Um, it's a couple different independent labels. That's doing their thing, and that's getting their recognition. That's that's making shit happen for other people for the city. Hold on one second, my bad. No, you good? Call real quick. 
just the next guys that I was interviewing. They trying to figure out where to park. I'm sure. And I, I uh, y'all, y- did they actually take your keys? Yeah. I, I take take care of the valet. Okay. Yo, yo. Hello. Um, Oh uh, yes. Um, are are they right there? Yes. You can give them the phone. Um, hold on. I can go down there. I my It's the same bill, guys. They got move No, I'm gonna take care of your valet. She just. He just All right, uh, he he right here. It's our friend. Cause uh, yeah, they they with me. I'm on the phone with them right now. Yeah. Well, okay. I'm sorry okay. about that. I mean, sorry. no, you fine. We yeah, got I, we I, got I, the Mercedes in the Jeep outside too. No, I understand that. Okay. Just the fact. So that I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take care of their valet. So. Okay, the, not the valet. I, the, the fact that man, I know you wanted to use the room, mm-hmm. but you know, a hotel manager. See, I don't want her to come in here and start charging you for using the room. Okay. Because you. You know what I'm saying I'm just they, she doesn't know. Yeah. So the people that's coming up, I figured that they were up because remember she came up with some some bottles of water or whatever. Yeah. So I figured it's where it was at. I just wanted to know where to send it. Okay. okay. Yeah. Right. Because technically, you, this is like a public area space for everybody in the hotel. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's all I was going to let you know. All right. Appreciate, I appreciate it. it. All right. He 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 about to come get y'all. Yeah, he just came in to talk. He just came in to talk to us just to verify. So he he, he come to get y'all. Okay, um, second floor, what number room? He go uh, when you come up off the elevator. If you look to the right, you are gonna see some double doors. I'm finishing up an interview anyway. Okay. Um, but he will show y'all. He'll let you know where I'm at. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. So uh, damn. What was the last thing we was talking about? What labels are doing it? Oh yeah, so like yeah, so if you was the ranking, so you was talking about Summer Walker, you know, what I'm saying and that label, like who else? Because like you know, on the outside in, you know, we hear about the QCs. Yeah, definitely. You got QC, you got LVRN, you got Authentic Empire, you got Slaughter Gang, you got it's a couple of people, man. That's that's really doing their thing. It's crazy from the A. And I know y'all loving the space right now. It's. It's just crazy. Like I went to Detroit two weeks ago, mm-hmm. and the energy there is crazy. You can see it's like on a, a minute scale of coming up close to where y'all are, because they got so many artists mm-hmm. popping out of Detroit. Like, where? How long do you see Atlanta kind of keeping this trajectory up? Yeah, I feel like within the next five to seven years, label offices are going to start being ran here in Atlanta. And they're not ran here yet. Nah, not like the the Interscopes, the Atlantic. Some of that stuff is like in New York. Sony, you got to go to New York. LA, all your deals, you think about it, when it's people LA. sign these major deals, they're either going to LA or they're going to New York. So pretty much it's the independents that pop here and then they partnership they with something in LA. They with a major, yep. Got you. I got you. So like, you know saying? You working with artists, man. Like, just Sean, like, man, some of the artists you working with, like, what mm-hmm. can you can you, can you you just kind of brag on some of the accolades that you've accomplished? Uh, yeah, man, I've worked with several people, man, from Atlanta, mostly. Um, Money Man, Money Moo, of course, uh, K Camp, Sorry the Kid before. Uh, who am I missing? I've done, I've worked on like several projects, like album release. When the albums are coming out, certain labels are calling me to pretty much put together a whole marketing plan, like, hey, this artist is coming in town. Can we set up a whole run for them at your events? Let's get some promotion going. So that gave me a segue into really working with all kind of artists. Um, future, shit. You name it. Pretty much everybody from the A, man, that then got up out of here, I didn't have something to do with it. Got you. May not necessarily been like a management standpoint from it, but I've had my hands in it. So like, ultimately, being that your hand is in the management, like what is your ultimate goal as far as in your career? Co- label. Yeah, my own label. Right now, like I've been interviewing with labels. They want to hire me as an A&R. Got you. Um, just because of my what I do and how I know how to find talent and know how to build a record. Um, so now I've been sitting with different labels and label execs of people trying to get me on board. And I've just been kind of staying a free agency because I don't want to be just tied down to a specific label working with they specific roster. I want to be able to work with everybody. Um, and until I get to what I want to do, I've just been doing that right now. But overall, I do want my own label. Got you. But man, I tell you, y'all making moves. You know what I'm saying? It was, I hate that I didn't get to hang out with y'all when y'all came to Dallas. Yeah, yeah. But it's y'all coming good. back. Yeah, we coming back. Getting the bag. 
Get in the back. You know show. what I'm saying? Like, yo, bro, you know, I hope, man, that, you know, I can get my clout up because I know definitely, I don't know if y'all know, but I brought you and Money Moo on here so I can get my clout up. I mean, I know nah, y'all man. telling y'all story about trying you to good. get my shit through the nah, roof. You, good. you, you good. know what I'm saying? But no, man, I think it's, I appreciate you sharing that, like that expertise in that. Because like artists just think like label, 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 manager, manager, nah, manager. Find somebody that's going to, you need the bread, bro. That's what that shit takes. You yeah. need to be able to market your shit and How put much? that shit in places. It varies, man. It depends on the artist. I will say R and B is a little bit more harder. Yeah, because you you take away that club aspect, so right. you can't really just go and just run it through the clubs. You got to really get them some good content to see um, your work and hear your sound and your music. So it depends, man. It depends. I've if, seen if you said like the average, like somebody pushing a single. On a single, what 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 would that effectively eighty to a hundred thousand? It's the competition so tough now, man. You got everybody want to rap. You got to be able to separate yourself from everybody gotcha. else and do other things that other people can't do. And that's why I think artists treat hip hop like um, scratch off tickets with their single. Yeah, they they release one song and they hope they like see this is the lottery first before they throw a whole yeah. bunch of money into it. And then once you see that that's working, that's when you hit it while it's hot. But how do you know if you work it? If an artist is only dropping it on Instagram, the clip. They doing it wrong. So, so like, so can you give me like a blueprint? Can you give them a blueprint? When you dropping a single, you got to make it available to everybody. Mm. You got to make it for every age group, for people who don't have Apple Music plan, paying those subscriptions. You got to make sure it's on YouTube or it's on your SoundCloud or... Those are the spin reel of my mixtape apps. Like got you, you got to make sure your music is able to be reached by anybody. Got and I you. think a lot of people don't be doing that effectively, um, and it hurts them. Uh, but that's one thing I would say. Like when you dropping a record, you need to make sure that shit is everywhere that a person can get to it. And just to get your poll, because I've been asking everyone I interview, this is radio or blogs, which is the most important? Ah, uh, shoot. I will say that radios took a decline. Um, I won't cancel it out fully. Okay. Um, but definitely, internet is like taking that shit by storm, man. And it's like you got to learn how to adapt and use both when you need them. Hey, man, that's that's facts. Well, Red Push, man, I appreciate you gracing me with your wisdom. It's all good, man. Gracing my audience with the wisdom, man. Hopefully, they won't blow up your inbox. Trying nah. to get managed because they know, hey, man, let him find you. Just work. Yeah, just work. I mean, people send me stuff all the time like to check out. Do you and listen? And I check it out. I listen to it. Even when they just send a link, they don't say nah, nothing else? No, I don't, I don't check that. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Like, man, say what's up to me first, bro. Don't just send me a link and, like, click on it. Like, bro, tell me what's up. What am I clicking on? Is it a song? Is it porn? What is it? Like, you feel me? Like, I'm not going to just click on something. Have you ever thought about releasing a video on Pornhub? Nah. Nah, hell no. Nah. That shit monetized, fam. I know. I do an uncut yeah. video on there though. Yeah. And and do like kind of like a premiere with like a director's up. cut. Yeah, that's just some free some free free promo game. I can do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Partner yeah. up with them, man. Had them put you on the front page, run the ads on there. Hell yeah. yeah. Red push, man. Hey, we got to tap in, man. I appreciate you give y'all giving me my clout. Oh, good. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate you having me. Now that I know you throwing parties, once to you know. I'm going to try to find a hookah spot after this. For sure. I mean, I got 11.45 every Tuesday. I've been doing that shit for like four years. 11.45 every Tuesday. It's a club in Buckhead. If you come to the A, 11.45 on the Tuesday night is where you want to be. Going up on the Tuesday. For sure. Before Drake, we was going up. (laughs) Hey, man. Well, I appreciate you, man. And let's leak in soon. For sure, man. I appreciate it. Peace.